Hello and welcome to the IDA Consultant's review of the FDA guidance documents M3 R2 Non-Clinical Safety Studies for the Conduct of Human Clinical Trials and Marketing Authorisation for Pharmaceuticals as published in January 2010. To accompany this presentation some mind maps are available that contain a summary of the data. You can get these by sending a blank email to nonclinical at ideaconsultants.com. The address will be at the bottom of the slides for the remainder of this presentation. This um, guidance is put together for helping people with the development of pharmaceuticals, generally small molecules, um, and is a general guidance for drug development. Um, Biotechnology derived products have alternative guidance in the form of ICHS 6, however there is overlap and this both guidance should be consulted. Um, also, innovative medical products um, such as siRNAs and vaccine adjuvants, um, whilst this guidance does apply, greater scope for dealing with it is, is allowed uh, and these things are judged on a case by case basis. This is also true of developments for products with a life-threatening nature, um, such as cancer, HIV and um, congenital conditions. And again, these are conducted on a case-by-case -case basis, with um, the toxicology and clinical requirements varying dependent. The first topic that the um, guidance deals with is the selection of the high dose for um, preclinical studies. Um, most people generally design trials that try to obtain the maximum tolerated dose. However, it's got to be bearing in mind that this is not essential. Um, neither is maximum feasible dose. It's generally considered that the maximum dose you should apply is um, 1000 milligrams per kilogram per day for the mice and the same for non-rodent species as well. Um, and this should generally provide um, more than 10 times the human dose when scaled up. Um, if it doesn't, um, in some rare cases, you can go as far as 2,000 um, milligrams per kilogram per day um, or the maximum feasible dose. If this still doesn't provide a margin of error of tenfold, um, then you, you really need to consider how you're going to tackle your clinical and take some expert advice. Um, the Generally, the maximum that you should go to is 50 times the um, human clinical exposure based on area under the curve calculations. Safety pharmacology and pharmacodynamics and these are generally done in two species although often it can be argued that a single species is adequate. Um, this doesn't cover your normal pharmacodynamics um, looking at your primary pharm primary pharmacodynamics can be done in mouse and it doesn't actually have to be done to um, GLP um, as long as the information just contributes to the dose selection in the non-clinical. Um, the non-clinical safety package should include a review of the cardiovascular effects, the central nervous system effects and respiratory toxicity effects as well. For toxicokinetic studies, again, two species are generally required, one rodent and one non-rodent. Um, and these are done before human exposure and should be having full systemic toxicity, combined with in vitro toxicity studies um, for metabolites and um, plasma binding uh, proteins, as that's in human and in animals. Um, you don't need to... Um, conduct a review of metabolites unless their exposure is over 10% of the total product exposure. Um, that's just for first in man. Before you go into phase 3 you would require full ADME which is absorption, distribution, metabolism and elimination data and in vitro biochemistry. For acute toxicity, it's no longer required to do a single dose toxicity study. In fact, it's considered slightly unethical nowadays. Um, and the acute toxicity can be conducted as part of your general toxicity studies, um, as part of the dose escalation um, 
Let's do this before you go into man. For the repeat dose toxicity studies, again conducted in two species, the animal duration generally is equivalent to the human duration at this stage, just to get your product into man. So if you have a two week clinical trial, you will require two weeks of um, animal toxicity. Nice and straightforward. For marketing authorization, you will require longer duration animal studies that exceed the normal clinical exposure. This is just for increased margin of safety as when the drug is out in the general population. Um, and you generally exceed the, the human exposure by quite a considerable margin, up to a maximum of um, six month rodent and nine month non rodent is generally accepted. The first dose in man is generally based on the animal toxicity data, it can be done from single species and is based on the pharmacodynamics and the starting dose is, that is usually on what's considered the no observable adverse event level, the null calculation is used as the basis for that. There are a whole other group of tests that are required um, before you can go into man and these include um, well, start local toxicity. Um, this is no longer required. It's generally accepted to be part of your um, standard toxicology tests. Um, reproductive, to reproductive toxicology is required if you're doing um, any studies in females. So it's generally required in phase three. Um, for phase one and two, you can use uh, male-only studies, or if you wish to include women, you can have women of no childbearing potential. Um, for products that have a CNS activity or a metabolite that has CNS activity, um, a study needs to be undertaken to assess its abuse potential. Um, photo safety, the requirements for photo safety testing are generally considered on a case by case basis, especially for uh, early stage preclinical work. Um, immunotoxicity, again, this should be covered by your standard toxicology and doesn't generally require uh, an additional standalone study unless a signal is seen and then full investigation is required. Um, carcinogenicity, again this is covered by separate ICH regulations, ICH51A. Um, and if there's concerns for before first demand, a specific package will be required. Um, and genotoxicity, again, if your preclinical studies, in, sorry, your phase one studies are a single dose, um, a simple AMS assay is sufficient. If you're going to be requiring multiple dose, you'll need to do um, more advanced chromosomal aberration tests. Um. Now you need to go to um, the second video in this series, part B, where we discuss the other aspects of the um, regulations which include the microdosing studies, which are clinical trial outlines um, that require a minimal amount of animal data to get into and can be very very useful in accelerating your product development to a point where it's investor ready um, and also uh, managing the risks of any product development. So that'll be in part B and I'll uh, look forward to speaking to you then.